Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is another Q&A video. If you watched my last video, which if you haven't, then I will link it down below, but that was a personal Q&A video. And this one is going to be more uh, fashion and handbag related. I literally just finished filming that one. So this is just a kind of continuation. But I wanted to do two separate ones just because there were a lot of questions and I wanted to try and get through as many as I could. So I have a ton here to get through. Um, I have, I got a lot of questions on what's on my handbag wish list. I will be sharing that uh, as well as quite specific brand questions and all kinds of stuff really so I'm excited to answer them and I'm gonna go ahead and get stuck right in. Okay so the first question is what is on your handbag wish list? This was definitely the most popular question in terms of handbag and fashion questions by far. So many people ask this um, and honestly I don't have that much on my wish list at the moment. I was really lucky to tick a ton of my wish list and so there isn't that much remaining. I really like the Louis Vuitton Retiro. I think that's totally gorgeous so I would definitely like to add that to my collection at some point. I also really like the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs backpack but heaven knows I do not need another mini bag so I'm trying to resist that one. I'm trying to resist the cuteness. Um, apart from that, I still love the Valentino clutch. Uh, I did get a Valentino pouch recently, which I showed in my accessories haul, uh, and that was kind of in lieu of the clutch, just because the clutch is so expensive, it's almost a thousand pounds, which is just too much money for me to spend on a clutch, but yeah, I'm still definitely lusting after that. Um, in terms of other things though, I think that's pretty much it. As I said, I did tick a lot of my wish list. I would one day like a top Chanel Jumbo, but you know, you can never tell what Chanel is going to release seasonally. There's also the tiny matter of the Chanel price increases. They just had a really big increase in the UK. So Jumbo's now 3,700 and something, I think, or maybe it's 3,800. It's around that mark. It was a really big increase and it's kind of getting into silly territory now, so I'm so glad I have um, my two jumbos. I have a red one and a black one, and I'm just not sure if I could spend that much money on a jumbo. I would have to really, really love it to spend that much money, because um, that is just an insane amount of money. So, yeah, Chanel going absolutely nuts with the prices. I will have to buy something from Chanel this year, because I do have a credit note with them, so I don't know whether that's going to be an SLG or two, or put that towards a bag, um, but I have until August to decide, so... We'll see what happens with Chanel, but um, I'm definitely a bit more wary of Chanel. I'm trying not to look at their new season releases just because I know the prices are insane. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for my wish list at the moment. Uh, the next question is, why don't you own any Hermes bags? And before I answer this, I want to say I know I pronounce Hermes wrong. I think it's Hermes, but I sound like, I feel like I sound like a Wally when I say it like that. So I'm continuing on with Hermes. I'm really sorry if it offends you that I say it wrong. I'm going with Hermes, I'm really sorry. But yeah, why don't you own any Hermes bags? And the answer to that is, I'm not really sure. It's just not really something that, I would say appeal to me because, you know, as a handbag lover, Birkin and Kelly kind of has special status, but I just know that they wouldn't work for my lifestyle. They're extremely expensive. They're very difficult to get. And for me, you know, the Chanel Jumbo is my ultimate kind of holy grail bag. So for me to go to like, four times as much effort and for it to be like triple the cost and all that kind of or double the cost um it just doesn't really make sense for me to kind of pursue a, a Kelly Rob Birkin when my heart isn't absolutely in it if that makes sense um and those bags are generally lovely you know I like more than just the Kelly Rob Birkin I think the garden party is really nice and I have looked into that in the past uh, I like the Evelyn more now I didn't used to like it but it's kind of growing on me so I think they do many beautiful bags I just I don't know I've never been that drawn to the brand. I think it's also kind of an age thing. I definitely want to explore the brand at one point, but I also think Emma's um, tends to look better with women who really kind of own their style and are really sure of themselves. And I feel like, you know, in my 20s, I'm still kind of figuring things out and I just feel like when I'm in my 30s and a bit more established maybe then I'll look at Hermes um, but at the moment I just don't feel like it's quite right for me and it's certainly not right for my lifestyle because you know the Birkin and the Kelly are obviously handheld bags and I'm much more of a shoulder bag gal I kind of just throw things in and I just run off to work and run back and yeah my life is too hectic for that at the moment so one of my 30s maybe it's just not right for me right now I don't think. Next question is how do I determine what bag to get next? Uh, so if there is a hole in my bag collection or bag wardrobe, then I will try and fill it. But honestly, when you have as many bags as I do, and I don't know what the number is, but I'm guessing it's more than 15, um, 
yeah, I don't have any holes, you know, I don't need any more bags for sure. Um, so it's really just about what I like. I am trying to be more conscious about um, the bags that I buy though, so I'm definitely trying to steer more towards large bags because I use large bags every single day and I pretty rarely use mini bags. And I have a lot of small Chanel bags and a few other small uh, bags from different brands. And so I'm really trying hard not to buy any more smaller bags. And um, as I said, I am lusting after the Palm Springs mini backpack, but try not to go there. Um, but yeah, so I try and consider what I use and what's suitable for my lifestyle, but other than that, um, it's pretty much just kind of what catches my eye and what appeals to me. Next question is, how do I store my bags? Uh, I get asked this a lot in general, and I don't really have a specific way at the moment. A lot of them are in their boxes just because I'm kind of still in the process of moving, even though I've been here ages. Um, and in that case, I stuff them with tissue paper, and then if they have chains, I try and wrap the chains in tissue paper, and then I'll just kind of nestle them within the tissue paper in the box. Because if you buy a Chanel bag or and I think it's pretty much just Chanel, I don't think Louis Vuitton necessarily do this, but you do get a lot of tissue paper, and so um, I don't generally put bags in their dust bags that often, I don't think, um, but yeah, I, I, tissue paper is always a good idea because it helps to fill out the shape, and that's the thing that I most worry about, but apart from that, I don't really do anything special. I generally like to have my bags out on display just because I don't always get to use them all the time, so I figure I might as well get pleasure from looking at them even if I can't always use them, so um, just out in the open, but I do try and stuff them with tissue paper if I can. What was my first LV piece? Uh, so that was my Neverfull, I believe, which I still have. I got it in the GM size uh, in the monogram and I absolutely love it. Such a great bag. I would recommend it to anyone. What is the one bag I can't live without? Um, I want to say my Chanel Jumbo, but honestly it would probably be my Neverfull just because even though I adore my Chanel Jumbo to bits and I would be devastated if I had to part with it, I have probably not gotten more use out of any bag. That didn't make sense. Um, I've used my Neverfull the most out of any bag I own and that's been the most useful for me, so I think it would have to be my Louis Vuitton Neverfull just because it's been such an essential part of my life over the past two years. So the next question is, if you have to pick only one bag and one SLG from your entire collection, which one would it be? So I kind of answered that um, Louis Vuitton Neverfull Chanel Jumbo if I could, and one SLG, it would probably be my Insolite wallet from Louis Vuitton. Uh, I really love that wallet, it's seen me through quite a few years now, and it's just a great all round wallet, I really really like it, so yeah, probably that one. What would I suggest for a first designer bag? Uh, so that's kind of a hard question to answer, it really depends on your budget I think. Uh, if you want something kind of casual, I think the Gucci Soho Disco is a great choice. It's fairly affordable, I mean, you know, it's still very, very expensive, it's £600 or thereabouts, I think, um, but that's a great bag, it's very luxe, it's very iconic, um, but it's just, yeah, you get a lot of a bag for your money, I think. Um, otherwise, in terms of totes, I think the Neverfull obviously is a great choice. I've also really been loving my Tory Burch Perry tote, which is uh, a cheaper option and it's just a beautifully made bag, so um, it really kind of depends what you want. If you want to go super luxe, then obviously you can't go wrong with a Chanel flap, um, but it just kind of depends what you want it for and budget and, and all that kind of stuff, really. What is my Holy Grail bag? Uh, so I already have it, it's my Chanel Jumbo uh, in black caviar with gold hardware. I'm very fortunate to own my Holy Grail bag. In terms of kind of next Holy Grail bags, and you know, if I'm not considering what I already own, it would probably be a Chanel Torp Jumbo. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I would still, I wouldn't really call that a Holy Grail, it's just a bag I really want. Um, definitely my Holy Grail is my Chanel Jumbo. Where do I get my inspiration for daily looks? Uh, so I am mostly in kind of work clothes on a daily basis, you know, five days a week. As uh, so, in terms of workwear, I'm not too adventurous with my workwear, so I don't feel like I get a whole lot of inspiration. But uh, I really like uh, suits, which I mentioned in my last Q and A, the the TV show, and they dress really, really well there. So I always like to look, especially at what Rachel's wearing. She has great dress sense. So the next question is, do I wear my Chanel bags to work, and do I get questions on prices from colleagues? And um, I don't currently, I have done it in the past, um, but generally I don't just because my Chanel bags tend to be smaller than what I need for work, I generally take uh, kind of big tote bags to work. 
Do I get questions on price from colleagues? No, um, I work mostly with men, so they do know that, you know, I'm a crazy bag lady and they know I spend a fortune on bags um, and they just kind of laugh about it, like they don't really care and I think that's kind of as unfortunate as it sounds, there's a difference between working with, with men and women. I think with women it's a slightly more, um, it's a slightly different dynamic I think, um, but with men, like certainly the guys I work with, they just, they don't really care and they just think it's hilarious that, I don't know, they just think I'm ridiculous for doing it, so, um, you know, it's not a point of animosity or anything like that, so, um, no, I don't really get questions, but if I did, I don't think it would cause any tension or anything like that, so I, I would have no issues carrying my bags to work. Uh, will I do outfits of the days and a shoe collection? Yes to both those, I'm literally just waiting to get that set up. Um, I, I struggle to kind of find clothes at the moment just because all my clothes are in piles so if you saw my vlog you will know what I'm dealing with. So as soon as my wardrobe is set up I want to get into doing outfits of the day. I'm definitely going to do a shoe collection as well, that is on my list. Um, I just have to get everything sorted out but I will be doing more varied videos hopefully in the future. Has there been any bag or accessory that you sold and then regretted the decision? Uh, no, not really. It takes me a pretty long time to decide to sell a bag. I don't sell them very easily and so when I do I generally have thought about it a lot and I don't really regret anything because of that. So um, no, not really. I think I am going to do a bags I've sold on Y video soon um, just to kind of explain my reasoning but um, no, in terms of regret I, I can't say I have any. Apart from your black jumbo, what bag or item will you never be without? Uh, so apart from my jumbo it would go to my Nevful and then apart from my Nevful it would probably be my Chanel Mini which I absolutely love. I can't get enough of my Chanel Mini, that's my black one. I like my red one as well but if I had to choose it would definitely be my um, black square mini. What was my first designer bag and when did I start? My first designer bag I think was a Mulberry bag and it was either the Roxanne or the Kira. I forget which one came first, um, but yeah, it was definitely a Mulberry bag. And when did I start? I think I bought that when I was about 16, I wanna say. So um, I don't know if that's young or old, but yeah, it was about 16. What age did you start collecting or found out about high-end bags and how you managed to save for it? Uh, so I kind of answered that question, um, it was about 16 I think. Uh, in terms of how I managed to save for it, uh, I worked, I have always been one to have part-time jobs, I've had a part-time job since I was like 15 I think, so I've worked very consistently, in fact I think my first part-time job was like when I was 11 or something like that, I was very very young and I've always been quite motivated to work and save the things I want just because I knew that my parents were never going to buy me expensive designer bags so it was kind of up to me to you know make that happen and I was always very happy to do it and it really kind of taught me the value of money and I've always been very careful with money because that my boyfriend always makes fun of me because I can be so cheap with so many things like I will always stop to pick up pennies on the floor and I will go to great lengths to save even very small amounts but I happily spend a lot of money on handbags um, and that's just because you know I really do know the value of money it may not seem like it because I do have so many expensive handbags but I've always been very very motivated to work hard and then save and then go after what I want so that happened that started when I was pretty young um, and I just kind of carried on through working life I guess. Where do I sell my bags? Uh, so now I sell my bags on my blog. So I had a blog sale in January and I'm really lucky to be able to do that because I, I have a bit of following now so I can do that. Um, previously I've sold on eBay. Uh, I don't think I've ever sold on Vestiaire Collective. I have a list on there but I'm not sold and um, their commissions are very high. Um, I have sold on Vi Dressing before. What do I think about contemporary line bags? Uh, I love contemporary line bags. I have no issue with them at all. I have a Tory Burch Peritote, which I love and I'm using at the moment. I think it's so great. I also love the new uh, Robinson style from Tory Burch. I think they're really cute. I think you can get some great bags from contemporary lines and they're just as good quality as things many more times their price. So um, yeah, I, I really like, well, it depends on the line, obviously. Um, I'm not such a fan of Michael Kors, but Tory Burch I really like, Kate Spade is really cute as well. I think you can get some really great bags. And the last question is, how would you describe the dress code at your workplace and how does that impact your bag choices? I have spent years making the same mistake as you mentioned in one of your vids. I have tons of clothes and shoes for the weekend, but realize I spend 95% of my week in stuffy corporate settings. So I'm spending 2016 cleansing the wardrobe. 
I'm very glad I'm not the only one that has done that. Uh, in terms of the dress code at my workplace, so it's kind of a funny one in that you can go in very casual and that's fine, or you can go in super dressed up and that won't look out of place either. Um, we do have clients, so it depends if you're client facing, which I sometimes am and sometimes not because I work in marketing, so it depends kind of what day I have. Um, so generally on Fridays I will dress down in jeans or leggings or something like that. Yes, I wear leggings to work occasionally. Um, but then other times I'll go in kind of in a pretty smart outfit, you know, um, dresses and blazers or skirts and blazers um, are pretty much my go-to. I almost always wear heels. I tend not to wear suiting, I've never had that much of a corporate job, um, but the guys around me almost all wear suiting. They don't wear ties, so it's not like an investment bank formal, but um, it's still fairly formal, so there's a lot of leeway and it's kind of up to you how you want to interpret the dress code, but um, it kind of just depends on, on the day I'm having, to be honest. In terms of how that affects my bag choices, I tend to go more for functionality and what I need for the day rather than kind of matching it to my outfit. So I don't switch out bags every day. I don't really have the time or the inclination to do that if I'm being honest. Um, so I tend to gravitate towards tote bags just because they're very easy for me. I can kind of just throw my, my lunch and my keys and my laptop in there and just go. Um, so generally speaking, it is a tote bag. I will sometimes, if I have a kind of um, more formal work day or I have an event, I'll bring a nicer bag, um, but those are kind of, those aren't that often, so generally I will go towards tote bags. So that's it for this Q&A video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If I didn't answer your question, I'm really sorry, but you can leave it down below and I will get back to you. And also, if you have any bags that you're lusting after, please do leave them in the comment section because as you can tell, my wish list is pretty sparse, so I would love to get some inspiration from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.